And of course, let me be clear, the physical problem is the last manifestation in the body. What does that mean? It starts as a spiritual issue, a crisis or an unease, which eventually there becomes a mental or emotional unease, finally landing as a physical disease in the body. Mm. So the physicality is the last place where it becomes visible. This is the Mindfulness Experience Podcast. My name is Keith Fiveson. On this podcast, I spoke with the visionary artist George H. Lewis. George is a healer, philosopher, and renaissance man that expresses himself through his art and various mediums, including painting, portraits, photography, sculpture, music, lectures, and public speaking. He also uses sound therapy and Tibetan bowls to help people feel things inside that they may not have felt before. George shined the light on the human condition in this podcast and its evolution. I totally enjoyed the conversation with George who offered up a fresh perspective on today's issues, ideas, and their impact on all human beings. Enjoy the show. In some regards, the reason I have the podcast going is because of your influence. You said, hey, you got to use your voice. You got to use your voice. So, George, what is happening? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's thank you for having me on. I feel very honored. And yes, you do have to use your voice because I think that's your soul con one of your soul contracts is because, you know, you, you've, you've intellectually studied a lot. And I think what we're all trying to do, and I've, you know, been well educated too, and, you know, we're perhaps mirrors to each other. And the, the brain is fantastic, but to heal is to touch with love, that mm -hmm. which we previously touched mm -hmm. with fear. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is it's dipping back into the heart, into the somatic, into the body, and then we can start to see what's in front of us. Is what we see in front of us truthful? Not from the mind's mm -hmm. perspective, because that's belief and programming, but from the heart's perspective or from the gut, from the spleen, from the sacred mm. chakra. If you think mm. of human design, you know, human design is, you know, one of the offshoot shoots of, of, of astrology mixed with the I Ching and the Kabbalah. But the point is, is we're, we're really at this stage, we're being forced through the COVID pandemic, plandemic, whatever you want to call it, to really question what is reality and to go beyond some of these old limited belief systems so you know i want to in my own way and you and i like the hero's journey you know explore uh what it is to be human as we come into the you know we really are emerging into the 21st century the age of aquarius mm -hmm. oh my goodness gracious wow we haven't even started and you've dropped like in that one introduction hello george what's happening We've got the somatic work, we've got the, you know, hero's journey work, we've got what's happening with the pandemic, we have what's happening between the heart and the mind and perception. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff here to unpack. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's all very, very juicy and all very, very uh, relevant to what's going on today. Um, and I, I really wonder, you know, uh, we started talking about, you know, the, the programming and the perception and the reality of things. So just so we understand that, uh, you know, I wrote a book, the book, uh, The Mindfulness Experience. And really one of the things I talk about in that book is the, uh, you know, so many people are living life from the outside in rather than from the inside out. You know, the ability to connect in with the mind, the the body, the spirit, which the root word of breath is spear, S-P-I-R, spirit, you know, and the ability to have the right food and the right, the right sleep and the right rest. You're talking about it in a whole other way, which is very, you know, rooted in breath, re rooted in what, what are you thinking? What are you, what's your heart saying? And then, you know, looking at that as, and one of the things I, I'm very aware of, you do a lot of sound work. You know, and the sound work, one of the things you said to me, I thought was was really big, which was, you know, opening up your heart. And you had mentioned this right now. Can you talk to what that actually means to connect your heart with your mind? Because, 
you know, I think nowadays with with never mind COVID, but with the Ukraine, with things that are happening around the world, we're all very we're, we're dealing with a lot of existential angst, a lot of you know questions around who am I, what's going on in the world, how do I take care of myself, how do I take care of my family, all of these questions. Do you have a sense of that that maybe you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, it's a very big conversation and yeah. it's going to take a, a, a while to unpack it. But, but once one begins to understand energy, uh, one can see there are forces, principalities in this world, which aren't really serving the, the human, uh, which is what we're talking about. Because when we talk about the human and we're talking about the heart, we're talking about, you know, waking up to uh, who you are is requiring mm -hmm. letting go of what you imagined yourself to be and again, so what does that wait, wait wait so what does that mean like we're talking well, about like i talk about the beneath. earth the the sky the water the you know the, just sort of a naked human being uh, uh, without all the programming how uh, what does yes. that mean well yeah. when we see a child come into life it's why are we so fascinated when we see a child a baby because there's something that they know they don't have the words yet that we've acquired mm -hmm. now through to age and practice but there's an all-knowing and they're very sensitive they can sense goodness and love very easily and i think there's something that we have to almost go back to the source uh, something very beautiful about a, a pure child that hasn't been indoctrinated and mm -hmm. I, I think that the sound therapy is very interesting it brings out the inner child in us the adult so when i place bowls on the body or around the body it, it almost like uh, reconstitutes the neurological pathways. It, 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 it sort of activates something within the, the chakra system, the auric field, which integrates the mental, physical and spiritual. And then people can, they often describe they feel lighter or mm. they may say at the same time, which is paradoxical, they feel more grounded, which in some ways could be heavier, but not heavier with anxiety, not with the weight of third dimensional reality, but more with a sense of, oh, divine purpose, tuning in. It's almost like a tune up. Music mm. tunes us up into mm. our soul contract. I mean, I, I really find music, we all know this, is the universal language. And when mm -hmm. we listen to it, especially when the music is of a certain hertz, of a certain vibration, which is what sound therapy is, think Tesla, we're tuning ourselves up into mm -hmm. the cosmic divine matrix as opposed to an earthly, maybe a false matrix. So yeah. this sounds so, so. This sounds a little, uh, if if you don't mind, it sounds a little woo woo, right? You know, it it has for for people who aren't familiar with this, right? I mean, there's been a lot of work around sound therapy and how people who are you know uh, 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 in wheelchairs, people who have spinal issues and so on, that can't really can't move that are incapacitated using sound therapy for some reason, their body starts to react. They're able to go ahead and it accesses a part of the brain and a part of the spine or a part of the body that uh, can't otherwise be accessed. So, I mean, is this kind of woo woo or is this kind of from a physiological, neurological viewpoint? I mean, is this, you're talking about sound therapy or you're talking about getting down to the root of who we are, yeah? So I think what happens with anything that is still not within the mainstream. There isn't a language yet to describe it. And we have all naturally become very skeptical, dare I say, unfortunately, cynical towards things out the, outside the mainstream. And that's been very deliberate within the programming educational system to keep us confined within the five senses. What I will say to you, Keith, very clearly, is anyone who experiences sound therapy properly doesn't need then to have the words or even they will start to use the words that maybe I'm using, which may sound woo woo to someone who's not uh, akin to it, because you can't apply the old fashioned linear masculine, uh, if you like, language of sound therapy when you're actually dealing with something innately to do with consciousness, because modern science hitherto doesn't really do consciousness. You have to go to string theory and quantum physics, and that's when you start to see the bend into philosophy and back into religion mm -hmm. and spirituality. Right. 
Right. And so right. for me, it's very clear that people, I've, I've had many cynical, skeptical people who've come because they've got major physical problems. And of course, let me be clear, the physical problem is the last manifestation of the body. What does that mean? It starts as a spiritual issue, a crisis or an, an unease, which eventually there becomes a mental or emotional unease, finally landing as a physical disease in the body. Mm. So the physicality is the last place where it becomes visible. And Western medicine and Western perception tends to focus on that. What mm. we do through sound is like the mystics of yesteryear, we go back to the root and, and we start with the energy system of which the physical is just a part of it. So forgive the woo-woo, but if you have to change your perception of what reality is. And when you start with consciousness, you're dealing with a much bigger, it's like a radio frequency. In England, I grew up with 95.8 FM, capital radio. Right. And everyone in England knows this, okay? You yeah, I had 102.5 FM. Yeah. Well, let's do, one, no. let's do 102.5 then, because we're in the right. United States. You <laughs> tune it to 102.4, you can still just about hear it. You right. could do 102.6 just, but beyond that, the frequency's gone. Right. What we're doing, we're increasing the frequency up and down, mm -hmm. and it's very unstable. It's destabilizing for people because we're, the bandwidth is increasing. But the reality is our minds are increasing, our bodies are, we're tapping back into something that we've almost forgotten as a species. And we're not gonna get into whether that's been right. deliberately organized or not in this podcast, but it's a question of the sound allows us to reroute, to reconnect, I think to remember. What does that mean? To remember who we are, divine, human, divine spirits having a human bodily experience. And so right. the, the sound requires, all these mystical languages, the, 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 the mystical, sorry, um, uh, 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 systems that require a different language. You can't <laughs> stick to the old materialistic language. Right, right. And George, you know, I, I, I have been um, uh, privy to and a willing uh, subject of your sound bowls. And I have to say, it is transporting. It's not only transporting, but I could feel the vibration eternally. It's not something that can be really, you know, uh, a cog there's no cognitive kind of perspective in the left side of the brain. It's really much more of a right brain experience, much more of a, you know, a, uh, a, a physical, emotional, collective experience where you know you can you my the whole body starts to hum the whole body starts to be in vibration harmonic resonance with each with with itself so it, it is a it is something that uh, is very difficult to articulate you know it's not a it's not something that you know it's it's like trying to describe what the breeze is or trying to describe, you know, the feeling of the sun on the skin at the end of the day uh, yeah. or, you know, the, the sound of a child's laughter. You know, these these are things that are very, very hard to describe. But yet, once you've experienced them, they are transformative. Right? And they bring us and they bring us joy. Yes, and they bring us joy. So your business, and I've seen this when I say your business, your passion. When I looked at your artwork, you know, your artwork really evokes that feeling. It has that sense of lifting you up, lifting you up and giving you hope and, uh, you know, uh, a, a sense that there is something beyond. And uh, the work that you've done, uh, the work uh, around your healing work with sound is there, but you've also done some incredible work uh, in philosophy. And one of the things that, you know, really I listened to recently was your thought process around what's going on in the world uh, and the transformation of the world uh, and this period of time that we're in uh, and using astrology from an archetypal viewpoint to go ahead and articulate that in a way that people can potentially understand. Can you give us some perspectives in terms of what is happening right now? I mean, it just feels like we've got COVID, now we've got the Ukraine, that the world is in a, a, a tectonic shift, that the plates are shifting. Is that, yeah. is that pretty true? It is. So we have these uh, planetary aspects that occur on this uh, on this planet. You see, the, the, the planets don't um, make things happen, but they archetypally allow for things to play out on planet Earth. So, for example, the Pluto-Uranus 
conjunction or oppositions, specific angles between these two outer planets in particular. And Richard Tarnas has obviously written about this much in his book, Cosmos and Psyche, and I've given master classes on it over the last three so, years. So, so let, me, let me just stop for a moment. So when we start talking about the squares or the conjunctions or the trinities or you know whatever they are right the sextiles whatever they may be we're actually talking about astronomy in one in one hand but then we're also talking about the archetypal representation of these planets and what it means from a ancient astro astrology viewpoint in terms of really understanding philosophically what the impact is and over I mean, astrology has been around for what, 3,000, 4,000 years? More, I'd more say. than that. I, 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 I think it's been a lot longer. But then, you know, yeah. according to Western knowledge, of course, it's been around for three or 4,000 years. Um, you know, right. we could also sit here and talk about, you know, how old the pyramids are, but we're not doing that. Right. And, and, and what is right. history and how real it is. Right. But, but, I, but, I'd love that conversation, but, but let's, that would be a good well, I'm conversation. A, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, de, uh, of, um, um, of, uh, of, um, What's his uh -huh. name? Um, fingerprints of the gods. Um, yeah. 25,000 years back in the yes. age of... But, but to answer your question on... Well, to, to elaborate on your brilliant Please. statement about astronomy and astrology, let me put it this way. Astronomy is yang. Astronomy tells you what is in a very material, literal sense. Of mm -hmm. Mars is there. Venus is there. It's making a 90-degree angle. What does astrology do? It's the yin, it's the feminine. It tells us how it relates to us as human beings mm. on planet Earth. You cannot have one without the other. I'm not even going to say astrology is more important than astronomy. It's They work together. Listen, the secret of alchemy is the divine marriage of opposites, which mm. give birth to the spirit body of transcendence associated with the liberation of the soul. It is the, as you said, as above, so below, as within, so without. It is the unity, finding unity consciousness within the polarity. So when we look at astronomy, which is, if you like, chronos, linear time, we look at astrology, which is kairos, which is re relative time, which is how it feels to us. Then we have a real deeper understanding of what's happening within cosmos and psyche, within our own galactic field and mm -hmm. what we're doing here on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. OK, great. So. Uh, I'm sorry to take that short segue. I thought it was very important and there's a lot to unpack with what you said. Very pithy stuff. Tell me, uh, how does all this work out now when we see these tectonic plates shifting in the world and a lot of people are kind of freaking out still, jobs, I mean, nothing, you know, it, while while the pandemic seems in one respect like it's it's done, in another respect it just seems like we're now shifting into a whole other flow. Well, okay, I mean, I, my job, and this is my hero's journey, which does make it a little bit of a a, a, a wound for me, is mm -hmm. I need to get the public to wake up as to what really happened with COVID. If it mm -hmm. really was that deadly and serious, how could it have been dropped so quickly? And it's for you to work that out, you, the listener. You know, one thing you can't do is you can't tell people the truth, okay? You can, what you have to do, you, you, you must show them so that they can see and feel it for themselves. A bit like gas, you know, we all hated the orange man, right? All hated the orange man at two gallons of a, 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 a petrol pump. Now we're looking at seven, eight, nine. I mean, you know, we have to go to the precipice for people to really want to change and in a way to see what the reality has been because it's been smoke screened. There's been a, it's a bit like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. We're really ripping back the curtain. And that's what Uranus and Pluto does. Mm -hmm. Pluto is seismic change. It's, 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 it's transformative. When Pluto goes over your chart personally, and when it goes over it collectively, nothing is the same again. I'll give you the same again. I'll give you an example. The United States this year in 2022 is having an exact Pluto return. That means the last time Pluto was 26 degrees Capricorn was the American Revolutionary Wars against the tyranny of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. This is a very powerful time. And here I sit with a posh English accent and I know exactly which side I'm on. <laughs> I know exactly which side I'm on. I'm on the side for democracy. I'm on the side of we the people. Mm-hmm. In that sense, I'm a proud patriot. What does that mean? It means because I believe in liberty. I don't just talk it like an inversion and pretend that I'm going to use it and then control the masses. No, 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 no. I believe that everyone has a stake in society. Now, good leadership is being able to be transparent and then people prop you up, support you. You go into leadership for a while, you go in to be in service, not to drain, not to you know be corrupt and then be there for 50 years, on both sides of the house, by the way, this, this occurs. We need real leadership. And I think there's a waking up to the fact that we have all been led astray. We believe too much in these politicians. We believe, believe too much in these CEOs. We believe too much in these doctors. We believe too much in these teachers. We've taken power away from ourselves and now it's it's time to bring it back to decentralize and bring it back to you the people we so the from people. uh so 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 that there, there's a lot there there's a lot there to unpack again very pithy very uh frightening for some people that want to trust the old system want to trust the you know want to trust the powers that be because it's much easier to go ahead and trust the powers that be than kind of you know be out in the wild, make it on your own, and not and, and so can I try respond? to Can I respond to that? Sure. Let's go back. Let's go back to your founding father. You all love George Washington, okay, Americans. Now, when he started, he was a very small group of people. You know, I mean, it wasn't even thirty-three percent, which is what we're told in the history books. I mean, mm-hmm. it was probably five or ten percent of people. And eventually, he built a movement, and he began to persuade people that without. Um, you know, no, without representation, you can't have taxation. And, and America needed some independence from really the central banking system. Right. You know, it was about money then, and it's and, and the control. It is about money and control still today. And the going back to the planets, Pluto and Uranus is when they come into some form of conjunction, whether that be an opposition or a square they they tend to create seismic change and instability but also newness comes in now between 2012 and 2022 we had an exact conjunction between pluto and uranus the last time was in the 1960s and we all know what happened then the difference is this time there's a lot of other stuff going on you've also got a saturn square uranus which is adding fuel to the fire saturn if you think castrates his father uranus and of course from that fallen genitalia down into Cyprus is created Aphrodite, the goddess of love. But the point is, Saturn is rules and regulation. Saturn is stricture. Saturn says no before yes. And at the end of the day, it takes his son Jupiter to overthrow his father. And this is if you're, the, the myths of the heaven are, are playing out. It takes time. But uh, we are seeing the fall of Saturn. Saturn, some people would say, is where the word Satan comes from. I tend not to say that is too simplistic. But the point is, Saturn, when he is not censored or he is not balanced, wants absolute totalitarian control over humanity. It doesn't want freedom. And so we've got to breathe into the freedom because we may be scared as souls, but if we give in to these structures, they will have tyranny on earth like we've never known it. And my but George, but George, I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean like a, uh, does that mean like a revolt to the old systems and a oh, let me shift ask into a, and shift into a new world paradigm, a new view oh, looking at the world? Let me ask you this. Do you believe in human intelligence or in artificial intelligence? You see, Saturn, what Saturn really wants to do is to map us, uh, is to have us all uh, labeled with a barcode on us. And this is part of the transhuman project, this of, of changing, uh, literally changing our DNA and ultimately to, to suppress our humanness and to suppress our absolute ability to be psychic, to tune in, to be intuitive and to love. I go back to the first thing we said on this podcast today, that we're here to experience love. And when we dip in to the body, the somatic through love, we really can sense what's real. But if we stay in the head, we get pulled around from this belief system to that belief system, and we're not anchored in the truth. And you obviously everyone's got their own truth, but there is some common core 
consciousness which is truthful about the human uh, ability to love and to be an empath mm. and to share there's enough mm. resources around for that that's the new paradigm and we have to try and see what the fear is and alchemize it mm. and see that these old structures again doesn't matter whether they're left or right it's all about division when you divide you can conquer the british were brilliant at it in india the romans were brilliant at it in france and in germany you know the babylonians were great at it but when we divide we conquer we've got to see it for what it is the old system does need to be witnessed and as a result it will be dismantled and it's going to happen whether we like it or not the more we embrace it the quicker the timeline will speed up the more the new earth will come into play that i know astrologically and psychically mm. but it, mm. it is it is for us to really together hold hands and 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 reimagine a world which is based on a love frequency which is a different vibration well you see i like i like the way you i like the way you looked at that towards you know because everything you dropped was like really i mean it's kind of mind-blowing right you know uh, for for someone like me for example i'm going to be 67 years old this year and you know i i and and there are a lot of other folks that you know have life experiences they went to college they looked at the they looked at the system you know the system of uh, uh, uh capitalism the the whole system of getting a job having a family having a house doing whatever they and you know the structures there we're really talking about now a huge shift not only in the economic system you know whether or not it's uh whether or not it's cryptocurrencies or whether or not it's looking at the internet the ability to go ahead and really be connected globally and really looking at energy or looking at a number of other areas but the point being is that you ended up saying you know if we aren't looking at caring for each other if we aren't looking at love or freq higher frequency of love and care, then, you know, that 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 seems like the shift. And I'm wondering if this what's going on in the Ukraine is just another recognition that we need to be more caring and loving and kind and compassionate, that we need to really start looking at these economic, you know, the, the economies around the world and start you know, changing. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a, I'm a vegan, really. Uh, I'm plant based, and you know, I always say, hey, if if people just change their diet seventy percent, you know, we'd be able to not only save the environment, but we'd be able to feed the planet if we went plant based seventy percent, eighty percent. So I'm just wondering the shift here. What do we do personally? I guess what's our, what is our personal responsibility? And well, how can we go ahead and, and, and ride the wave? So there, there are two things going on. We have our own personal health <clears throat> to look after. So amongst all this hysteria and fear that has been pumped out, fear porn on the mainstream media, I mean, absolutely constant. Um, we have to take care of ourselves. So we have to have to bring in meditative practices. We have to bring in Sangha, which is community, and have more conversations like this. And breath work is so important. Now, a lot of people are opening up more to plant medicines and, and many different um, naturopathic ways of, of understanding the body and the, and the mind and to heal trauma you know there's a huge this is a trauma planet after all so we have the personal area where we have to really go deep spiritually but we also have to try and deprogram ourselves and understand a bit more what's happening collectively so let's take ukraine we've suddenly jumped now from covid 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 to suddenly ukraine and so we have to start going, hmm, what's the mainstream media's agenda here? We have to start to look at it. And this is the hero's journey. It isn't easy, whether you're 65 or in the 40s or 20. It's the hero's journey. And we have to release our belief system. If we're being told something on mainstream media repetitively, like, you know, we heard for many, 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 many months and years, build back better build back better. It was a mantra because it's programming us to get in to the whole globalist perception of an economic reset based on a digital world currency, which mm -hmm. is control. Okay, now let's talk about Ukraine. You asked me about that. We have to think about it. What's been so go what's been going on since the fall of the Berlin Wall? What happened when the United States government in 2014 
overthrew a democratically elected government in Ukraine? You have to ask that question. It may be uncomfortable. And then what does that mean about the biolaboratories there, those huge biolaboratories which carry anthrax and different diseases there? You know, you have Wuhan and you have what's happening in Ukraine. You also have another biolaboratory in um, a place called Taiwan. You're going to watch that come out in April or May. There's going to be some big focus on Taiwan. We're kind of pawns in this. I'm not saying I know it all. I certainly don't. But I, what we're being told in the mainstream media at best is a small part of the truth. I think at, at worst is an inversion. And I would hazard a guess, because you're asking me my, uh, my, my uh, take on it, is uh, this is a continuation of a takedown of a very corrupt system. Think of Burisma. Think of a lot of crime that has gone through some of these states, which legally, you know, have very, it's very complex their legality. Um, for example, Ukraine actually never officially, according to the United Nations Charter, left the suzerainty of Russia. If you look that up on the United Nations Charter, you will be surprised. So there's an awful lot that the public don't know about Ukraine and the bio labs and the fascism that is based there. And of course, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm pro-Russian at all, but I'm saying we have to stand back and we have to see if we're being pummeled with stuff via the mainstream media. We have to be very careful about what what really is truthful. And the more we can just see it for what it is and allow it to alchemize and do our own spiritual work, mm. it will become less and less important. And eventually truth will start to come out. And I tell you what I'm going to see. I see it astrologically. There is going to be a barrage of truth start to emerge within the collective consciousness between now and 2024 when Pluto leaves Capricorn. Mm -hmm. It is going to be, to the people who are the normies, who are unawake, it's going to be so frightening because they have been so programmed. But to people who are beginning to peel the onion, and people, mm -hmm. of course, like David Icke, who's been doing it for 30 years, you know, he is a great mystic. And talk about his hero journey. He was vilified in the 1980s when he was interviewed by Terry Wogan on the BBC. You know, and now, you know, millions of people listen to him. Millions. Mm -hmm. you, 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 that's mainstream. CNN has 225,000 people listening. David Icke has two, three million. You, you do the math. You know, this is the great awakening and it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you bring up all these uh, areas, you know, the, the, the normies would be, you know, frightened to death. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm a normie. I have a other perspective uh, and that's why you're on the show. I think the I think the real question I have is how do we internally do the work? Because, you know, we started out and I'm looking at the time and I want to make sure that our listeners are able to go ahead and take something away with them. You know, uh, I talk about the show's name as the mindfulness experience. And really what that means is the ability to go ahead and not only be present, but to um, to alchemize, you know, these negative feelings and to be able to be with them, to expand on them, to breathe on them, to go ahead and change the tune, the tone, the temper if you will of the fear the uncertainty the doubt into love compassion and kindness so from your viewpoint how do people uh, take care of themselves and alchemize and really look at more mindfulness experiences for their life so that they can be out in the world and not necessarily be of the world I mean, these are really great questions. I mean, firstly, on the subject of trauma, I mean, don't forget trauma creates changes that you can't choose. Where well, Trauma trauma TV, I, I, and I'm totally with you on that. But, but, but here's the good news. Healing creates changes that you can choose. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again for the listeners. Trauma creates changes that you can't choose, where healing creates changes that you can choose. The whole healing process is freedom, is uh, through free will to activate your ability to, to hold a higher timeline for your soul contract. You know, that's where we do have divine free will on this planet. We do, it's not all preordained. We have our right. archetypal tendencies. You know, I have a sun in Aries, I have a Leo ascendant, and I have a string of planets in in, in Pisces, that is going to have, a, a, it's going to color, it's going to color my perception of the world. A Mercury in Pisces is very mystical, which means it's very hard to communicate these big ideas when you're young. 
Very but let's get back let's get back to the, the the breathing process because what you said i thought was very powerful i talk about it all the time is through mindfulness meditation through the breathing process we're able to get that space you know that victor frankl space of uh, stimulus and response so that we're not responding right away but we're making a different choice we're we're making the choice to a higher vibration right and in that choice we're able to change our reality so from your view well let me ask you 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 do healing work you do astrology work you help people see you know what they need to see about themselves that may be very evident to you but not as as evident to themselves what do people how do people what do you recommend people do practically do every single day or you know try to put into practice for their lives to have more present moment higher vibrational experiences so what i want firstly people to do is try and find where they find joy try, mm. so and people have different archetypal uh, tendencies so i'm quite kinesthetic what does that mean i'm a double fire sign sun moon in, in, in a fire sign i want to move so my meditations can be playing the piano they can be painting they can be going for a meditative walk. Yes, I'll sit on the mat and do meditations, but that's not my primary way to tune in. Mm -hmm. Other people, if they have a lot of earth or fixed water, they may be more comfortable just to sit for half an hour, 40 minutes and really download there. There isn't a right or wrong, but start to be childlike in your curiosities. And uh, I have tuning forks, they're cheap, you can get them. Play with the sounds. How do they mm. feel somatically on the heart chakra, on the pineal gland, let's open that mm. up. This is, a, this is a real thing here, guys, the pineal gland, the third eye. And of course, it's calcified because of fluoride and other things. Learn about the pineal gland, obviously go on DuckDuckGo. You know, you're not gonna go get this information on Google, but learn about the pineal gland because then you're gonna start tapping back into this amazing temple that we call the body. And uh, music, music is one of the great, great unifiers. And we all love music. I mean, you know, I've done tests with Mozart and I've put water on a speaker and I've played Mozart and it forms a perfect hologram in water. I mean, you know, this is sacred geometry. How beautiful is that? So uh, be playful, be childlike. Think of the sun card in the tarot, you know, uh, or Uranus, the, the fool. The fool is, is, is I am everything, I am nothing. Uh, don't allow limitations through schooling or parents to say you can't do that. Be playful in your mm. ability to, to create through your, your healing practice, because then you'll find joy. And then the biological age becomes less than the chronological age. Then you become more positive. And then you start to breathe into something that is more aligned to our human truthful nature mm. as opposed to some artificial, uh, you see, AI, artificial intelligence, by, by definition, is a replication. It's a clone. It's not the real thing. Mm. So it's mm. not. I want you to tap into your human genius because you're all geniuses through your humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And, and you know, this idea of really tapping into movement, really tapping into sound, the pineal gland, really understanding that recognition. It reminded me of the, and you talked about, uh, you know, having a, a bowl of water and, and playing music. That reminded me of the work of Dr. Uh, Masio Moto. Uh, and, you know, the, just uh, having the bowl and having a word on the bowl, just using words and the sound vibration really does change the overall um, uh, quality and resonance of our internal, you know, bowl. I mean, we're made up of water. So why, if, if you if you look at the work, you know, it really shows that uh, intention and words and sound really have uh, an impact on our overall construct, our overall ability I mean, to be present. One hundred percent. I mean, it's interesting. My first astrologer teacher was one of the last students of Dr. Omoto. And what I love is that, you know, he did discover or rediscovered, I would say, the ancients knew it, that uh, water carries consciousness. And when he put those two vials, he froze them to show them physical manifestation with love and hate. And the molecular structure on both of them is very different. Of course, the one that says hate, it's broken, it's cancerous, it's, it, 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 it lacks some integrity, where the one of love is resplendent, it's bright, 
it's 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 childlike <laughs> again back to our conversation of what the divine is the word divine comes from the sanskrit dvr which is self-illumination which is what the son of man is we're all sons of men sons of, you know we can change the words because of the, you know men women but it's the same thing it's we're all humanly divine and and we can stop dividing ourselves and understand you see here's the tricky here's the rub keith mm -hmm. We have to have these spiritual practices, but we do also have to become more aware of where the darkness is. Not to dwell in it, not to dwell in it, but to witness it and then say, uh-uh, that's what it is. We witness it and then we do this amazing practice. You see, to understand lightness, we have to also see the darkness. And that's very mm -hmm. young, but it's hard for a lot of people, especially in the new age movement. We want to just stay in the nice bubble of light. But um, we are going to have to, in this reality, in the 3D, just understand a little bit more of where it's come from, and then we can alchemize it through these beautiful practices that you're offering. Hmm. I love that. Um, you know, uh, we could go on and on and on. Uh, I have no doubt, George, I love talking to you, uh, not only with your posh accent, but uh, <laughs> the... But 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 the background and the perspective that you bring to it, I think, is, uh, you know, it really does call us forward to really learn a little bit more and really kind of say, oh, maybe reality is not the way we see it. Maybe I need to be doing something internally to go ahead and change my perception, you know, and and these practices, uh, whether or not it's sound, whether or not it's walking and being in nature, you know, just attuning ourselves to a different tune fork or a different residence, if you will. Uh, Dr. Rupert uh, Sheldrake uh, coined it morphic resonance. Yes. You know, and that whole idea of just really being in the world and not necessarily of the world and creating our own vibratory, you know, uh, experience, I think is you, you, you've really brought that forward with your work, with your portraits, your photography, your sculptures, your paintings, your healing, your sound therapy. You've got a book as well. Uh, you recently uh, published a book. What's the name of the book? Yeah, the book is called um, The Boy and the Boy King. Um, and it's about a boy. Actually, it's written about my son, Arthur, who travels back in time uh, to visit with King Tut in ancient Egypt. And there's a lot of symbolism in this book. I painted the illustrations and actually I channeled a lot of the illustrations, even though I lived in the Middle East for a number of years. So there was obviously a, a natural inclination and understanding of that remarkable part of the world um it is a sense of tapping into our divine the divine mystery and past lives mm -hmm. and uh you, you know i mean here's what i'm gonna say is i i think we're realizing that the old way of looking at the world the materialist objective way is is, is on the way out mm -hmm. right. it's changing yeah. this new way of perceiving this new way of seeing consciousness and awareness you know whether it's in plants or animals this natural intelligence even down to the single cell organism, um, even the atomic particle, consciousness is fundamental part of our reality. And when we understand that, really science, philosophy, religion, it all changes, it all changes. And again, we back to our radio station. Suddenly we are increasing that frequency and the world opens up and we get goosebumps, don't we, when we start feeling this, it's very exciting. Right. And, right. Yeah. and yeah, and this is, this is the new leadership. This is the new paradigm. Yeah, well, you know, um, my dad would always say, uh, you know, if you want to change your life, change your story. And I think the I think the tuning in and the ability to change the frequency, change the channel, uh, I think that's really very intentional. And I see it more and more. Uh, and uh, you've really articulated it uh, so wonderfully. Uh, and uh, again, we can sort of unpack uh, every part of our conversation and really dive deep into a whole other conversation. How do people get a hold of you if they want to go ahead and uh, either book you for a conversation or, you know, uh, book you for a, a reading or any other kind of work that you might do? I know you have a website. Uh, it's georgehlewis.com, uh, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I also have my healing website, which is jupiterinpisces.com, Jupiter in Pisces, which is actually fun because Jupiter is in Pisces right now. And also my Jupiter natally is in Pisces. That's why it's called this. But the other way would be my Instagram is georgehlewis. And then my email is georgehlewis at me.com, me.com. Fascinating. Good. Uh, this is... Uh, 
uh, all great stuff. Uh, I have to uh, uh, say that uh, I've been really very eager to go ahead and have you on the show. And I just want to thank you very much for your time and uh, give dropping dropping a lot of uh, a lot of uh, wisdom, but also a lot of uh, stuff to think about. Oh, my goodness gracious. And, and I will say I'm very grateful to you for holding space for it because it isn't easy, some of the stuff. And um, look, I'm not naturally very patient. And I have learned huge patience in the last, since 2016, actually. The, the timeline changed in 2016. And, you know, maybe that's another podcast for another time. But we really are awakening to vast potential of reconnecting in a way that we haven't experienced as a species. And I'm going to sound a little, a little, little odd here, a little crazy, but we haven't experienced what we're about to enter into since the great, before the great flood. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, uh, with that uh, in mind, I think we all better hold on to our uh, collective consciousness and uh, uh, just uh, uh, say a prayer and uh, have you back at some other point because we're going to have a lot to talk about. I have no doubt. Uh, thank George, you. thank you so much for being on the show and uh, I'll look forward to talking to you on the other side. Me too. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of the Mindfulness Experience podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show and the frank and honest and lively discussion with George H. Lewis. I also hope you gain some valuable insights regarding the changes that are happening on our planet right now and how you might take control of your life. Please follow the podcast to connect for future episodes, as well as subscribe, leave us a review, and suggest some topics that you yourself would like to hear. You can connect with us on our social media platforms or visit our website at workmindfulness.com for more mindfulness experiences. Thank you again. We'll see you on the next show. Take care.